Amber, welcome back on Short Dog. How are you today? I'm good. Oh, shit, it's going to fall <laughs> good. I'm just going to hold it. I'm good. Oh. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I just got done teaching a class, so I was trying to, like, rush from that class over here. So hopefully you can't hear them still in there, like, cracking mitts. No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, what Perfect. classes are you teaching? Uh, well, this morning I was teaching a boxing class, an adult boxing class, but usually I more do a lot of kids classes and I, uh, coach people with special needs, but, um, twice a week I'll jump in and teach the adult class. I and prefer the I... kid. Oh, I prefer please. the, I prefer the kids though. They listen better. I, yeah, usually they <laughs> also more teachable than uh, adults, but I wanted to ask you if you would like to disclose one of the techniques that you showed this morning. I did a reload. So it's uh, pretty much where you um, uh, hit the same side with power. So like, let's say if we did the jab cross, we would reload cross hook cross. And it's pretty much just being able to generate um, power from the same side. So instead of just like a double jab where it's kind of more like, um, speed if i was to throw the the right hand twice or the power side twice i would kind of cock myself back and then unload it again so there's power on both of them oh that's very very nice and uh, i'm pretty sure you will have uh, your occasion to showcase your skills in your upcoming fight with uh, larissa pacheco on uh, june 16th where are you preparing for this fight uh, I'm over at Combat Sports Academy in Dublin, California, and I'm over at El Nino Training Center in San Francisco with Gilbert Melendez. So these are the two places that I train at mostly. Yeah, those are the two places that I'm at. Every now and then I'll go cross train some places, you know, um, maybe go up to Alpha Male, do some sparring. Or if I'm out in Vegas, I have a few gyms out there I like to cross train at. But primarily CSA is my home and El Nino is also my home. Right now, you have some momentum. You're uh, riding a four-bout winning streak. How was it for you to debut in the PFL and score that impressive first-round stoppage? It was amazing. You know, I train, uh, I'm obviously I've been training super hard for this fight and I trained super hard for that fight. I was off for what, almost eight months to a year before that fight. So to go in there and just showcase my skills, especially a technique that we drill and we work here at CSA, um, especially against an opponent who pretty much said I could not strike with her, that I was going to be forced to wrestle. Um, and I love that. I love being an underdog. I love people counting me out. I feel like I have my best performances when that happens. And um, yeah, it was beautiful. It was really nice to go out there and just showcase and show PFL I'm here. And it's obviously landed me in a really cool spot to fight somebody like Larissa Pacheco, who I'm super excited about. And yeah, it was just a, a really cool moment that will live, live on in my journey forever. You also embody the not paid by the minute mentality you like to step into the cage and finish your opponent uh, how how do you see it i don't know this is a sort of question that I, I usually like to ask fighters you know how do you see the ending coming you know you like to finish your opponents by strikes you also like to submit your opponents by uh, with uh, submission maneuvers of course well, I don't put anything past Larissa. I think she's going to be the, one of the toughest people I've ever faced. And I'm expecting a war. I'm expecting us to go all three rounds. I'm expecting them to be hard rounds. I'm expecting it to be fight of the night. I'm expecting it to be an amazing fight for both of us. Um, she definitely is one of the toughest people I've ever faced. So I will not go in there just expecting to knock her out or sub her. If it happens, it happens. If it comes, it comes. But I'm mentally and physically prepared to go all three rounds in a war with her was there anything at all that surprised you in your fight with uh, Mar martina except for the you know you told me that she believed you would like you wanted to wrestle with her but then you know that happened and we everyone saw what went down on that yeah. night 
No, I was fully prepared for Matrina. She's obviously like a very well decorated striker. Um, I was expecting everything to happen in that fight and it just so happened to end the way it did. It did kind of surprise me that she just didn't give my striking any kind of respect and was pretty much like she cannot strike with me. She's going to have to wrestle. But other than that, like I was, I wasn't surprised by anything. I was fully prepared to go three rounds with her. And if we ever face again, which is very likely in the PFL tournament, the way it is, um, um, I'll be prepared again. When the PFL approached you last year, what was it that convinced you to sign with them? And uh, what is it that is motivating you right now to do well in the 2023 regular season? Well, who can pass up a chance to win a million dollars? Like, you know, I've been fighting for a long time. I've always been a featherweight. I've been a professional for eight years. And um, this was my shot. This was my opportunity. This was my time to put my name and and finally sit at the table and have people talk about me, um, you know, put some respect on my name and let people know that I'm a I'm a dangerous person. I'm a dangerous fighter. I belong in the PFL. I'm a I'm a true featherweight. I've never been lower. I've never been higher. This is my division. It's always been my division. So when I got the opportunity, I was like, wow, I got to take it. Um, I'm I'm super disciplined. Mo motivation comes and goes. I love what I do. And that's what keeps me going every day. I love fighting. I love training. I love preparing. I have tons of people, you know, watching me. I come from a place that, you know, not a lot of people succeed. Um, coming from Hayward, California. I'm from the Bay Area. Obviously, I'm super proud of that. And um, not everyone where I come from succeeds. And I want to be that person for them. I want to be that person that shows the world that it doesn't matter what kind of um, cards you're dealt in life, that as long as you believe in yourself and your dreams, uh, you can make it happen. And I've got brothers, I've got a full kids class that all are looking up to me and looking to me, everyone that I grew up with, you know, all my friends from back in the day, um, they're all watching me and I'm going to do it for them and show them that it doesn't matter like we can do it too you posted you know a nice post on, on instagram a nice uh, uh description in, in general after your victory you know the the referee was ra raising your hand and then the the caption sort of it's a sort of recap of your mma career so I'd like to discuss with you a little bit your time in Bellator MMA. That on that occasion things didn't go according to your plans. What was going through your mind when you were on that three bout uh, losing streak? Um, you know, I wasn't really um I wasn't really training like a professional. I wasn't really um, in it mentally. I had a lot of things going on in my personal life and I was just kind of showing up to the gym. Um, you know, I had some really good wins where I kind of just like bum rushed forward and knocked people out and that got me my spot. I had a really good fight with Janae. And then when I got to Arlene, I just didn't feel like I was ready to be um, at that level. I didn't feel like I belonged and I was going through a lot of mental mental health stuff, I guess you could say, a lot of um, insecurity. So every time I'd get in the cage, I always felt like it was me versus me versus my opponent. Like I wasn't really working on, on my side. Um, so yeah, I ended up kind of figuring it out there and having some bad fights and just kind of like quitting on myself. And, you know, it was unfortunate, but everything does happen for a reason. And it really did force me to kind of address my mental my mental state and my mental health issues and kind of made me reassess my life who I had in it who I was dating um the relationships I was in what kind of energy and effort I was putting in the gym on the mat you know just made me kind of change my entire entire look and and the way I approached everything I did in life and then COVID happened and that like you know I thought my career was over I didn't know what was because I'm in California so everything shut down there was no opportunities and I just told myself that you know I wasn't done I didn't want to end on that kind of note and I just fixed it all I fixed my attitude I fixed the way I was with my training partners with my coaches I fixed um, the way I dealt with relationships the kind of things I let inside my 
my my personal life. And I started working with a mental health coach, um, a hypnotherapist. His name is Richard Hart. And I really started to just dial in on what I wanted. And if I loved it, and if I loved it, I was going to give it everything I got. So yeah, Bellator was rough, but I think it was something I needed. And it's definitely put me in a position now where mentally I'm in it, physically I'm in it. I've never felt better. And I've definitely right now it's me and me versus my opponent. I no longer work against myself. I work with myself. And I feel like if Bellator didn't happen, then I wouldn't be able to um, be where I'm at and and be able to face an opponent like Larissa Pacheco and have 100% confidence that I can go in there and get my hand raised by the end of it. We are recording this interview in May. Let's play this sort of game. If you reach and win the finals, what are you going to do with the $1 million prize? Shit, I'm about to get out of credit card debt. <laughs> no. um, I don't really know. You know, I um, am just taking this tournament one fight at a time. I have never, ever had an amount of money like that. I definitely would like to, um, you know, take my brothers somewhere beautiful and nice. Oh, I have three brothers, um, oh, right. all younger than me. So I would definitely like to, you know, spoil them and take them some places. But obviously with that amount of money, like I would like to invest and just make sure that I'm set, you know, I'm set for life. I come from kind of a, a poor, poor family, poor place. Um, so yeah, I'm just definitely going to be smart with it, but right now I will make it to the finals. And when I get to the finals, we'll get there, but uh, it's one fight at a time for me. Amber, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with your upcoming Perfect. fight on, on June 16th. Hopefully cool. I will hear again from you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.